Hey, this is Greg from GMH Audio. Today I'm going to be showing you a song I made in a 60s rock rhythm and blues style and showing you how a little bit of thoughtful mixing can enhance even really simple arrangements. So, here's the song. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Now I'm going to be showing you my mix for the song. Here's my Pro Tools session. It is dead simple. Five tracks. Drums, bass, rhythm guitar, lead guitar, and organ. That's literally it. That's all there is. So I'll show you a little bit of what's going on here. The first thing that you might notice, especially if you're listening on headphones, is the panning is not what would be considered normal for modern music but it's something that was done a lot in these early stereo tracks, and I enjoy it a lot. So I've got the drums mono, and they're hard panned all the way to the left. The bass is also hard panned all the way to the left with the drums. I tried a bunch of different combinations of this. I really enjoy the hard pan drum sounds on like some Beatles records, and the bass and the drums panned to the same place on the left was a thing they seemed to be doing a lot. And in my experiments, that made the drums and the bass really lock in and be a strong rhythmic foundation for the band. Then I have my lead instruments, my lead guitar and my organ, all the way on the right. And my rhythm guitar is just dead up the center. So kind of unconventional panning for modern standards, but it's kind of idiomatic of this 60s style. Either this kind of panning where everything's all over the place one side or another, or just straight mono. But stereo is cool, so I did stereo. Let me show you a little bit more detail on these tracks specifically. Here's the drums. You'll notice there's only one track on drums. I only recorded one microphone for the drums. You'll see in the video, there's a microphone kind of sitting in the drum set. It's the same kind of setup I talked about in my lo-fi drums setup with the one mic setup. That's what this mic is. I'll show you what that sounds like. Show you a little bit of this other section on the ride. I think that sounds great, really cool and vibey. I don't feel the need that I need other mics on that. It sounds awesome, especially for this kind of vintage style before uh, multi-miking and close-miking drum kits was really popular. So as you can see, the uh, hits are really consistent on here. Part of that, is because Matt is a really good drummer. And the other part is that I did some compression on the way going in when I recorded this. So that kind of gave it a little bit of an edge and also helped even things out, squashed it down and distort it a little bit to give it a little bit of that style. And I have a bunch of plugins on here. So I'll show you what those are doing too. If I bypass them, here's what it sounds like with nothing. It might be a little quieter too. And with the processing, it 
So there's a lot going on there. I'll break it down and show you what's going on. The first thing I have is this Waves Tape Machine plugin, the J37. I use this on every track just to give it like that track to tape kind of vibe. It's just doing a little bit of saturation, a little bit of rounding off the highs and lows. It's pretty subtle, but I thought that'd be a cool inclusion. The next thing is where most of the heavy lifting is being done, which is this EQ. So this is not something that they would have been able to do in the 60s, but I figured we have the technology, why not use it to make a hyper-realistic version of this sort of sound. So I'll show you with and without this. Here's without. Here's with. So what's going on here? You'll notice these two big dips. These are like ugly resonant ringing that was in the snare drum. I just wanted to get that out. And I have a broad dip around here as well that kind of cleans up some of the boxiness of the snare drum. This is doing a similar thing, just a little bit of boxiness, a little south of 700. And then rolling off a little bit of high end because the high hats especially were a little harsh with this miking setup. So I just wanted to mellow that out a little bit. And then the real magic happens in these two dynamic bands. I'm using the dynamic bands of Pro-Q3, um, which can do some really cool stuff. And on things like this, where it's only one mic and you want individual control of certain elements of a mix, it can be super powerful if used sparingly. So essentially this one, this uh, lower one, is on like the kick fundamental. And this higher one's on the snare fundamental. And I have these set to boost at those locations only when those drums hit. So they dynamically respond to the incoming audio. So you can see when the kick hits, this will boost up, give me a little extra 60 for some thump. And when the snare hits, this 194 will boost up, give me some extra fatness on that snare drum. And I really don't want those frequencies rumbling around all the time, especially on like in between notes and there's a lot of room sound and cymbal ring. I only want those to punch up just when those drums hit. So that was perfect for that. Next, I'm doing a little bit of soothing. Just try and deal with these harsh high ends, nothing too crazy. Then I got this Sound Toys CQ doing some high end boosting, a little bit of 5.6 and a little bit extra low end, nothing crazy. This is a Another low end boost, kind of a pull tech style thing. I'm doing the boost and the attenuation to kind of get it a little bit smiley facey. Um, DBX 160 for a little bit more compression and a little bit different style of compression than I recorded it with. Um, this plugin and DBX 160s in general are really, really punchy sounding. And I wanted a little bit extra of that, but it was pretty intense. So I ended up running the mix down like 20%. So I'll show you what that would be like full on with the mix and then what the level I ended up going with. So the mix all the way up, it sounds really punchy and tight, but it almost like chokes it off too much for me. And I want that open roomy sound. So I dialed that down to 20% to get a little bit of that punch, but still maintain the character I liked about the drums we recorded. And just a little goes a long way with uh, the 160 tile stuff. And I got another EQ. This was going to be added later in mixing probably because otherwise I would have done it on the first thing. This is just cutting out some low end, probably where the bass was to clear up some space, especially because they're panned in the same speaker. Speaking of bass, I'll show you that. Here's the bass sound. Really cool, plunky, vintage style DI bass sound this is just going direct into a preamp. Um, probably a little bit of compression on there as well, punching up that plunk, run it through the same tape machine. A little bit of EQ, cutting out a little bit of boominess around here and high passing and low passing. This kind of bass tone is really focused on the mid range. It's not like a fat, warm, low end thing to me. It's really like these low mids. I boost a little bit of 300. That's where the magic is on that. 
And another instance of this 160, now I'm running it full on to really emphasize the pluck and punchiness. I'll show you what that sounds like. Gives it a really cool character. I really like 160s on bass for a really percussive bass sound. And that's all there is to the bass. Oh, one more thing. One of my favorite plugins, this black box thing on the low setting, adding a couple extra harmonics. Again, this kind of makes it more audible in the lower mid range, fattens that up a little bit without necessarily adding like sub low end because I really want it to occupy more of a low mid area kind of this area where I cut out on the drums. I want the bass to fit right in there so that they lock together really nicely. So there's bass and drums. Rhythm guitar is next. This was used pretty quietly. You could say that's like minus 16 almost. Really simple parts. Just kind of emphasizing some stuff. Simple like old school rock and roll style stuff. I've got a noise gate on just to kill some amp hiss that existed kind of in between the notes. Uh, this was recorded with a Vox AC15 with a Shure Model 51 vintage microphone. I've got the same tape machine going on. Again, with this DBX-160, I was loving that on this mix. Kind of emphasize the pluckiness of this guitar, make it a little more percussive, and let it kind of poke out on the hits and kind of duck back down um, when it's playing more extended stuff. Again, a little bit goes a long way, not doing a ton of compression. Um... Here's my EQ, cutting out some of this low mid area that might get in the way of the bass and cutting out some of these high mids that would probably get in the way of the lead guitar and the organ. This stuff is not really stuffed EQ in to make it sound good. I already think it sounded really good with nothing on it. I could show you totally bypassed what we got. And with the plugins. So it's not really trying to like transform the sound too much. It's just trying to fit it in to where there's space in the mix. And another little uh, CQ, similar to the drums, a little bit extra high, a little bit 5.6, cutting some low end in this one because I want to clear out space for the bass. Lead guitar. This is the same Vox AC15, this time mic'd with a 57 and run through a fuzz box. It's this fuzz box I built. I did a video on that. I'll post the link to that video if you're interested down there. It's essentially a fuzz face. And that sounds like this. I really like how this tone came out, especially in this solo section. It sounds really immediate and in your face to me. I really like it. The first thing in here is this D hum plugin from RX, just because I was using a strat single coil through a fuzz through a pretty loud amp. There's a lot of 60 cycle hum. So this kind of just filters that out. Um, nothing too crazy than that same tape plugin. This time I went with this SSL channel for some general shaping, just really cutting out some mid range. And that looks like actually all I'm doing with this. Boosting up. The input gain gets a little bit more saturation on this plugin, but it's really subtle. I put a spring reverb on here, really, really low in the mix, but just to give it a little bit of a reverby sound and a little bit of compression courtesy of this purple compressor. Doing very, very little. I like this compressor for more of like a, a tone box rather than necessarily like squashing a sound with compression. I think it has a really cool, rich harmonic character, and then you just get a little bit of that just tapping the compressor. So that's all I'm doing that for, nothing crazy. I can show you this sound with and without the processing too. Gonna have to turn up the volume to do that. 
because I'm boosting a lot with the uh, gain staging inside that um, SSL plugin. So let me do that one more time and turn it up. Again, not drastically changing the sound. I made sure to record a sound that was really, really close to what I already wanted. And these are just subtle tweaks to get it to all fit together. And last but not least is this organ. This was done with a software organ, actually. Um, and I might still have that. Yeah. So this is the um, track for the software organ. It's this Air plugin, this DB33. There's the settings if you're interested. Um, but what I did, because that sounded too clean to me and it felt kind of out of place in this style, which was a little more lo-fi, this kind of vintage style, having the really clean digital organ sound really did not fit in this mix. So what I did is I reamped it back through that same Vox amp that I used for the guitars. This time I used an SM7 to get a little bit more of a full sound. And that sounds like this. And then I have kind of this lead melody in the chorus. There we go. Same tape plugin. A little bit of soothe because the high end, especially through the amp, was getting a little bit harsh. Soothe does a great job of clearing up some harshness without uh, really messing up the sound too much. I again went with this SSL strip for my main EQ. I'm actually boosting a lot of what looks like 1.5, but these frequencies are not right on this plugin, so it's probably more like 1K or 900 in reality, but boosting some of that to help cut through a little bit, and then cutting a little bit of 2K where it got a little bit harsh and maybe competed with the guitar, cutting some low end, boosting some high end, and doing a little bit of compression as well. And then another EQ, just cutting a little bit more harshness, 2.6, probably was like getting a little a little harsh up there and maybe competing with the lead guitar. So just dipping that out a little bit. And you'll see here I got two lines of automation. That's because during the verse, this lead guitar is the main lead instrument and this organ's a backup instrument. During the chorus, the organ's the lead instrument and the lead guitar is just kind of filling space. So this is just volume automation with this trim plugin I have at the end here. Boosting up the volume of the organ on the chorus keeping it lower on the verses, riding the guitar a little bit on those fills and on the solo, and that's it. It's really as simple as a mix can get, but in my opinion, a little goes a long way, and it really brought this song together. I've got a little bit of mastering style stuff on here, but again, nothing crazy. The CQ's just there. I didn't even end up using it. A different tape machine, a little bit of Gulf Foss, which is sort of a dynamic EQ thing. That's a whole conversation itself. A little bit of saturation with black box for a little bit more crunch, and then just ozone maximizer uh, times two, because that's how I like to do it. Again, that's a whole nother conversation. And uh, this wonderful Shadow Hills mastering compressor using the discrete side of it only in dual mono because the left and right signals of this song are very different because this is drums and bass, this is guitar and organ. So I'm using this kind of dual mono and it does a nice thing to kind of glue it all together. And there we go. That's this mix. Five tracks. I think it sounds great. I don't think you need any more. And that's what you can do with really thoughtful kind of mic placement, really making sure you focus on getting the right kind of tones and then just subtle enhancements in the mix to bring it all together.